continue. Okay, so uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. So it's our 11th uh, meeting in our search engine uh, team. And today I would like to talk with you about the organizational structure of our team because, and uh, about the first uh, task, the first uh, kind of sprint we're going to have to deliver a first tool uh, working with the infrastructure uh, that, are, that is being built by, by Slava uh, so that we can already deliver uh, something on which we can address uh, further, um, further uh, requirements, further demands from other teams. Um, as a quick uh, quick uh, change topic for the first sprint and yes and my proposal for the first sprint is uh, to employ to fully employ the elastic search engine uh, produced already by Brandon uh, to work with all uh, v9 data on all three levels so sentences uh, paragraphs entire documents uh, plus semantic search also in a twofold version namely um uh, namely face and uh, annoy uh, and that, that would be the first uh, uh, a kind of a kind of the first sprint that we are going to do here uh, in a search engine team and to uh, to facilitate this we need to talk a bit about uh, role assignments because we have uh, something like 30 40 persons being uh, listed in in our group and uh, we have uh, regular uh, conversations uh, with um, five of us, something like that, five, six, something like that, no more than 10 persons. And uh, my, my idea is to just to, uh, to speak to these people uh, on Slack uh, with uh, specific questions, uh, whether they want to stay a, a member of, of this group and how they would like to contribute. I mean, by just by giving them, according to their expertise, certain tasks. And, the, uh, and uh, I have now a couple of questions uh, to uh, here present members of, of our group. Uh, Slava, do you need any persons uh, to help you? Some yeah, for, for now I'm just finishing a uh, basic setup and I already see that people started to use uh, Elastic Search service, and we also have Kibana deployment that actually allows to build uh, visualizations on top of it and uh, to export uh, data based on the search queries. So I think it's good start, and uh, we'll yeah, finish with. Yeah, our team. Um, our yeah, team probably yeah. crashed the server a little bit yesterday. Yeah, we were trying a lot of queries, and it, it was great. Yeah. So yeah. we can definitely, yeah, it's uh, helping us do a little exploration of the data because we're trying to collect like a training data set. So that's uh, pretty useful. And we can definitely give some feedback about how it can be more useful um, in terms of what we're using it right now. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that, that's great to hear because it's actually something that uh, we have been talking about, namely about this feedback between the whole database and the basic tools we, we, were, we are developing here. And let's say this high end uh, demands or requests from different uh, research teams. And that's, yeah. that's, that's good. Let's yeah, say thank good you, side. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to add that uh, we are not only uh, creating data infrastructure, we're also uh, building new services. And uh, today we deployed, uh, uh, actually yesterday we deployed Bell, uh, biological expression language, and uh, it's already available as a service. And second tool uh, is from, uh, I think, NASA, and it's a geoparser. So you can actually upload some text and you can, uh, extract uh, geolocations and you can visualize on the map which is very uh, fascin fascinating and uh, we're, we, we are now investigating how actually to make it more sustainable and uh, to help uh, creators to improve this infrastructure and after we'll provide like full access for all people that are interested yeah, that's great. I mean, thank you. Uh, so, uh, but do you need, uh, uh, just once again, my question, Slava, yeah. do you need persons? Do you need folks uh, to help you to do anything? You can delegate some sub-task. Uh, 
yeah, so, so for now, I, I really need people that uh, can uh, take a look also in this and create some useful uh, use cases that people can immediately run and uh, test um, infrastructure, like Kibana, you know, uh, it's already a great example uh, that uh, Brand Brandon used, and uh, I think people, after they see something visual and nice charts and we can query, they can actually uh, refine uh, their results and uh, they, ca they can uh, export different collections, not only on COVID, but yeah. about other stuff. So this is exactly what we want to see. We are not kind of trying to cut some stuff yeah, from sure, our sure. collection, but we are trying to refine and after to annotate uh, something. So for now, uh, if uh, people are interested, just contact me and uh, yeah, we will figure out how to create nice user stories and uh, also okay. uh, create nice yeah google uh, collab let's yeah, say sure. environment and uh, okay yeah, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's it's a good start yeah okay so you need to uh, actually persons just to be clear and not with uh, expertise like yours but rather person with this uh, like a biology medicine background exactly. okay yeah. so okay good uh, th that was my point uh, on which side you need a uh, kind of uh, like uh, an extra uh, staff extra people working with you for you okay the ne next uh, next question would be brandon brandon is uh, it's not present today brandon are you here no uh, okay but actually my idea is because brandon has delivered a huge amount of uh, work with data and actually to uh, keep uh, to keep it running it's impossible to delete like to to, to left uh, to, to, to leave Brandon with all this stuff for next weeks so my idea is to delegate actually two persons devoted to work only with Brandon with things that uh, have been done yet and up till now just by Brandon namely to develop new versions of the data like v10 v11 etc there are some volunteers to do it uh, present here not okay that's that's also good because i'm going to uh, draft in people being enlisted in our uh, in our um, group and also from the uh, general uh, uh, general meeting call from today. Uh, Tyler, who uh, work on multiple tasks, uh, is being now involved also in like like looking at our database, uh, HR kind of database with people with different skills because we have such a, a database from from our uh, sign up formulas and to for people with different skills so we can uh, make a kind of demand. When, when we need somebody uh, coding in Java or uh, doing uh, stuff with this and that library, we can find those people in, in the whole data bank of people uh, uh, being member of Corona Y. So um, there's Arthur who can say a couple of words more about it. Yeah, so I think it will uh, be helpful for, uh, first of all, there, there are so many pieces to unbundle and essentially we have this big search engine discussion. It kind of has to funnel into four specific things that uh, we've outlined as a diagram. Uh, I have no very clear picture on how to create that. I am starting to think that we can use Slack channels as a way to create these kind of fractals of uh, teams. And even though people will be jumping back and forth, it will at least create some structure and alignment and description of you know specific tasks that people are working on and i've kind of beta tested is uh, it with uh, uh, the task of uh, ontology types of papers i'm going to share my screen real quick um, so i created this kind of team ontology types of papers which is a sub subtask of ontology engine thing which is dedicated on specifically categorizing papers into different types, buckets, clinical trials, reviews, and things like that. And um, I'm, I'm trying to shape up this channel as a beta test of how we can do it on other um, directions. And maybe uh, me and you, Lukash, and, and Salva can have a quick call today to ideate the, the best structure for this. Okay. Good, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, to speak with Brandon uh, later on to like to uh, identify his needs to unload the, this huge uh, 
uh, bucket of, of work uh, he has now. Uh, okay, so that's the third point and elastic search. Uh, and uh, I'm, I, presume, uh, I presume we are going to have something like two or three persons more just on elastic search uh, so that when we have uh, multiple uh, code related or code design related things that we can share uh, those tasks so that uh, we, we don't need to wait for one thing to be done for three days or something like that. Um, and I'm uh, to do it, I'm also uh, I also uh, uh, go through the list of our members, uh, and also I, I'm going to contact Tyler to uh, to let's say to filter out people with specific uh, uh, with specific uh, background and expertise to work with with Brandon. So it's like four point. Uh, yeah, and uh, just uh, finally, sorry, I need to um, question all the same. And yes, uh, we have also uh, here uh, Imran. Imran, are you here? Okay, Imran, because I have today also a conversation with Imran, very, uh, very uh, direct and honest and, and frank. And uh, I think that uh, I can ask Imran to be a kind of a vision guy person in our team, uh, helping each other understand uh, different uh, perspectives and uh, being a kind in between person is it correct what i present now imran imran um yeah i mean i could do to that capacity and uh hopefully we could get things uh, on the right track Yes, because uh, now we want uh, to be uh, to, to have much more structure. I think that uh, I, I can be a kind of a host, pseudo leader of this group. Iman would be kind of a vision guy who, uh, on this this uh, let's say uh, high level uh, abstract level, or no, this high abstract level uh, con uh, can connect different dots. And uh, we are going also maybe hire a kind of a project manager person who will be able to chase uh, uh, people uh, just to deliver things more or less in time and to, let's say, to figure out uh, which person, which kind of capability, uh, time capabilities uh, has. Because it's also crucial. We are a volunteer-based uh, network, so it's quite difficult to, like, to enforce everyone to work 20 hours a week uh, with us. So it would be a uh, last point, I think. Uh, and now we have a such kind of a question answers uh, queue uh, to... I have a question because yep. I've been uh, quite out of the search engine discussion for a week. Do you guys have an actual like code base structure or something that you're using to, for example, I would ask that to Imran in terms of like the uh, the the task of categorizing papers and things like that yeah so actually <coughs> it's really interesting so it's good that christine's here as well um basically it started off with uh, christine and dan they organize annotators to um, construct categorizations for uh, study designs and then i have a small group where we're just classifying just supervised classification of those papers. But that's not really within the this group. It's always more like just kind of like a side thing that okay. uh, task BT needed and some other people needed. But. I got it. So probably beyond creation of Slack channels for these specific sub teams, we'll also need some GitHub structure and collab, a Google collab notebook structure uh, to support that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't think there's a, yeah. <coughs> they don't Very have their people. own repo, right? Because it's like kind of like a collaboration between Tyson and VT at the moment. And uh, Arthur, are you thinking to create a separate um, sort of the tasking for it? Yeah, but uh, sorry for interrupting, but I think that the, the, the environment created by Slava should uh, serve actually this point, uh, like should serve such, such purpose to annotate data in different versions of data. That's what, what Slava is creating actually, a kind of a data hub, uh, also in terms of metadata. 
Salva, can you help us explain how we will integrate our code base and things mm -hmm. uh, to produce the actual annotation? <clears throat> okay, so if you are talking about uh, sub-collections on specific topics, we actually can go to Dataverse and uh, store a data set there. And after to do like a connection to a hypothesis tool, so people can will be able to annotate uh, those uh, articles. This first thing, and second thing, we we can also apply some uh, NLP technique technologies to extract uh, entities and uh, actually to um, kind of verify uh, to compare what people annotated with what uh, machine learning tools can get from those collections. So this is kind of workflow that I see. Unfortunately, it's not complete yet, but we are slowly coming to this point where it will work. Okay, makes and sense. So it's just a question of timing and getting the infrastructure in exactly. place. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, we're, we're happy to uh, experiment with the hypothesis platform. Well, the, the other thing about uh, annotating study design is that it's not that you can directly annotate the information from the papers. It needs an additional judgment from the annotator to assign the paper into a category. So might be a little different from we're doing just you know, maybe marking a phrases mm -hmm. from a paper like that. Yeah. So yeah, I I understand uh, the challenge because uh, well, basically, uh, hypothesis is a tool. It was designed in a way that you can export all uh, information that people created and uh, all extra layers, and okay. uh, even few people uh, can can do annotation on the same article. And after you can kind of compare what they annotated. And uh, like already right, said, yeah. yeah, you can reuse this knowledge. So I yeah, really I believe think that. Yeah, be great. In, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you go ahead. Yeah, I, I think in this combination, in this pipeline, uh, actually, human can help to uh, machine learning to understand what is good and what is bad, and how actually to use this knowledge to uh, build like. Uh, something that Rose wants, like more like expert system, and uh, at the same time, it's uh, good for discovery engine. So I think it has a lot of use cases already, but uh, we have to try and uh, we will see how it will go. So um, regarding study design specifically, um, I, I pose this question to uh, Christine, because um, Arthur, you were looking, Arthur, you were looking at uh, kind of creating separate ontologies, right, that are not covered by, for example, UMLS, right? Yep. So um, does study design cover all subdomains that UMLS does not cover? I have no it, idea. Yeah, that, I don't really know if it's already covered. Um, I, I, I would adopt it, though, because uh, it does kind of requires substantial, like, Human analysis. Maybe Rose or Jeremy can yes, help us jump into yeah, please. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so um, right now we're separating uh, all the papers in Core 19 by study design, right? Yeah. And Arthur was looking at uh, which uh, ontology we would need uh, on top of UMLS. For example, yesterday we discussed how UMLS does not cover. Yeah. Uh, than for Jeremy's work, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So does study design, uh, does separating all these paper by study design, will, will they still cover uh, the needs of other ontologies? I mean, there's so many ontologies. Can't we just report the ones that we need? I mean, I'm... I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I guess what I was asking is like, is it, should we put ontologies, should we use ontologies on top, like before we separate by study design or after we separate by study design? Well, I mean, I guess, um, uh, if there's I a think we don't understand it, each other at this point. Maybe yeah. Imran, uh, can you try rephrase uh, without using ontology and study design, but using specific <laughs> examples like clinical <laughs> trials? Yeah, sorry guys. Um, <laughs> Um, let me just try to kind of think of how I can put this. So, like, if we can move it to Slack right discussion now, too, uh, just yeah, so yeah, we could also. And I think maybe, I uh, Jen, you could, 
Yeah. I think I understand what he's saying. The, the ontology builds the relationships and the words. And I think what he's asking is, do we use the output of the ontology to do the um, to do any NLP on to come to what the study design is? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's a long line of what I was saying. Yeah. Does everybody? Does everybody? I don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let me let me try again. In order to determine what the study design is, how do you do that? Right. And you're going to look at words to do that. Right. Is everybody with me? Right. Okay. Words, yeah. words, and, okay. words and concepts. Mm -hmm. And the so. words and concepts come from an ontology, which is just a way of structuring the data. Right. So the specific okay. words that you want and the specific concepts that you want, that would come from the ontology. And I think we've taken a sort of an assumption that UMLS covers everything, but I think we we discovered yesterday, I think, Jeremy, I'm not 100% sure on this, that maybe it doesn't cover everything. And sometimes we might need to, to pick out a couple of additional ontologies that will give us all the concepts and words that we would then look for with NLP. Okay, so I think I finally understood the, this question. And let me uh, try to ask you, Jeremy, uh, is it possible for you to define the direction of your research and the types of papers that you would be looking uh, into and describe this kind of categorization specific to your area of the, uh, direction of research? Sure, so I think uh, you know, what I'm looking for are um, molecular intracellular molecular mechanisms of uh, viral pathogenesis. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, which type so of the papers kind of do you so. Yeah. So the kinds of, so, and, and more importantly, I'm interested in causal relationships amongst those um, mechanisms, right? So, uh, so there are a number of ontologies that are, and, and that can represent these kinds of questions. One of them is BioPax, which uh, is already an OWL format. It's an ontology in itself. And, uh, it, and, and not only is it an ontology, but it has a huge amount of uh, buy-in from all these pathway databases. They've all agreed to export their data into <coughs> the particular um, ontology. And so uh, that's, now the issue with that is that it's not directly, it's, rec it's, uh, it's representing molecular mechanisms, but not necessarily causality. There's a recent paper by one of the developers of Biopax, which is attempt to get at causality from, uh, from Biopax, but really what they should have done is just convert it to Bell. Uh, because Bell is a uh, the biological expression language is a uh, is a format that is directly representing causal relationships amongst the um, amongst the uh, molecules, and, and it not only includes molecules but also includes biological processes and uh, gene ontology functions, and it also has a way of representing. So if you have some you know grounded entity that's you know you know that you can uh, Point to a namespace with right. Uh, you have some ontology term. Uh, you can then wrap that in these functions to say, all right, it's not this ontology term that causes this. It's the abundance of this ontology term that increases this, or it's the activity of the abundance of this. And so you can wrap these things arbitrarily, or you know, you can you can say okay, this is uh, a Jeremy, molecule. Yeah. Jeremy, sorry, sorry for interrupting you, uh, but uh, I think it's like. Quick thing, me and Christine have to jump on the call in two minutes. Okay. Got it. Uh, and I think that actually this topic is, I think, crucial for, for your task. And I think that uh, uh, I'm thinking now more about how we can help you to like to solve this, to, to, uh, to uh, settle this um, somehow, like to sort it out. So my, my question would be, do you need any help to uh, to work on on this question, which ontology is the best? Which library can help you the best? Which a com combination of libraries? When you need some uh, two or three or four hands more, to yes. Yeah, so the, the 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 help that I need. So one uh, person who's really been helping is Charlie Hoyt, and uh, he is now involved in uh, Corona Y, and he has basically developed most of the uh, Pybell um, ecosystem. And he has already worked with Slava to get uh, Bell Commons working. Um, 
and uh, John uh, Urbanic is a really uh, really knowledgeable about you know knowledge graphs in general, but also causality, which is what I I care about. Uh, Rose, of course, has a huge amount of she's just you're just a, like a really smart person, and then you have a lot of biology <laughs> knowledge, and, and I really appreciate any uh, any advice. Yeah, J Jeremy, so, sorry, but I I know I I would like also. How about this? How about this? I'll work with Jeremy offline and we'll try and come up with a list of here's what we need and here's where we need help. Yes. And I think I might be able to provide some resources to help with defining what the ontology needs yes. to look like uh, to make Jeremy's project work. Yeah, uh, it would be great. And also not only your demands, but also in terms of, let's say, a kind of HR demands. How many persons do you need more <gasps> to, sorry, what? Uh, to, uh, to speed up your work? Because I presume that uh, uh, every pair of hands uh, count, uh, and yeah, that's uh, so so that you can figure out uh, how many persons more one, two, three, and which which with with which background uh, spe more specifically. Okay. Sounds yes. good. Yep. Okay. Cool. Then uh, that's and okay. There are more questions. Uh, Okay, no, that's good. I think that we uh, we chanced to uh, to uh, discuss through the most important things. Um, the rest of the let's say the uh, the rest of the conversation we can uh, keep going on 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 Slack. I would like to thank you for for your presence and 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 your contribution, and for the, the this very productive exchange. And we will see each other next time uh, at the same time at the same place uh, tomorrow, I hope. And yeah, thank you. Have a nice right. evening, Bye. day. Thanks, morning, guys. Bye. Night. Bye. Ciao. Bye.